Hey guys, quick update video for the Poison Sparker in 325. Um, mostly it's nerfs. It's very much still alive though. We still have a 150,000 plus Ellie max hit, but our Fizz max hit took a hit, and our offense is just as strong as before. Um, the main thing is that the build's going to be even more expensive than it was, which, looking at the items, Original Sin, blah blah blah, it's a very expensive build. I just want to put put it right out there. This is not a league starter, right? This is the your second build, whatever it is, after you farmed a ton of currency and you want to farm T17s and all that stuff. This build is a beast, but it's not a league starter. All right, so I'm quickly going to go over the high budget version with Original Sin and all that stuff. And then at the end of the video, I'll go over the low budget version that uses Volker's Guidance. That setup is about six times worse and it's less tanky. Um, so yeah, it's, it's still, you know, usable if you want to play a poison spark, but overall I would highly recommend playing the high budget version. It's just so much better. Uh, yeah. So quickly just going over the list of things that have been nerfed. I'll bring this in. Uh, enduring cry, enduring cry. We ran on automation or whatever that it was called arms. We ran that and that was removed for our buff. And we now have two extra sockets, which means once we drop something else, we can run an extra aura. Because now, since Divine Blessing was removed, we're actually going to swap to Dark Marionettes with Guardian's Blessing. And then either Haste or Malevolence, or you choose. I think I'm going to use Malevolence because I want consistent movement speed, so I'll use Haste permanently. Uh, another thing we lost is Fizz Taken As on the Helmet. And as you can see, we lose about 15% Fizz Taken As. And in order to fix this, well, we don't really fix it. We just basically lose a little bit of max hit for Fizz, which is honestly okay. It's um, We're still using Lightning Coil, so our max hit for Fizz will be fine. Um, instead of the Fizz taken as on the Implicit for Eater of Worlds, we're going to be crafting on Duration of Ailments for enemies. And you can get about 20% on that, and that's a lot of damage. It's uh, about 10% more damage, which is, you know, considerable. Uh, and then instead of the crafted prefix, I'm thinking the best crafted pre prefix instead of that well, is going to end up being um, hybrid life. Let me see. Yeah, either hybrid life or plus one pierce or regen. So you can kind of choose. I think it's going to be one of those three. Um, next, the quiver. Let's see, let me bring my list back. Yeah, the quiver. So the poison spark... Quiver is going to be a lot harder to craft now that Graveyard's gone. Now, to see what I'm talking about, I'm going to bring up a POB over here. So this is the Quiver that most people run in League right now. And it is this triple fractured absolute monstrosity of a Quiver that's like really good, right? So the problem is this is going to be really, really hard to craft now that Necropolis is gone. And it's still craftable, it's very, very craftable, but it's very difficult and very expensive. Now this build's expensive to begin with, so you can you can you can choose to do this, but the crafting process for this is to do the prefixes first with uh, T1 life, essence, pierce, and um, veiled a veiled prefix, right? And then you need to go for proj speed, right? So that's going to be meta crafting for proj speed or reforge speed for proj speed, and ideally you want T1 because this this is scaled by 3.5x. And then you YOLO, YOLO 1 in 7 slam Hunter. And you hope for T1 um, poison on hit. Now, if that sounds expensive to you, that's because it is. And once you do that, you know, you can craft a suffix, anything you want. Most likely going to be uh, a type of Chaos Res or Cast Speed. And the alternative to that is to run a quiver like this with Fractured Pierce. Now, this is probably what I'm going to recommend until you have a stupid amount of money for that setup. This is pretty easy to craft. You uh, you fracture the pierce, and then you essence spam for proj speed. You suffix lock, pre uh, reforge chaos for the chaos res, and then you hope you have a open open suffix to craft on. Uh, cannot roll attacks. You slam and annul until well not you can't annul but you know what I mean. You basically slam for athletes or above like t one t one t two life, and then you do a veiled orb for the last prefix, and then finally you craft on a suffix of your choice. Um, other nerfs, oh, and also, because you craft this, you lose the chance to poison, which is about 70% you're losing. Now, that's important, because this is a poison build, right? So where do we, where do we get that poison? 
Well, we run 20% on Herald of Agony. We run 40% total from Septic Spells. So that's 60%. We run another 25 here, so that's 85%. And then we run three tattoos for the other 15% chance to poison. Uh, what's next? Helical Ring. So we run a pretty good Helical Ring with Fractured Damage, damage Over Time Multiplier. Now, these are being nerfed in terms of availability because you can't fix them anymore with the, fra the fractured like vendor recipe thing for Chaos Res. And so these are going to be way more expensive to get as a base. And I think they're already expensive this league, so they're going to be way more expensive. And this ring is technically craftable without the fractured suffix. In fact, in fact I had a friend make two of these in SSF without that. But that's going to be really, really expensive. And basically, it ends up being a um, AUG caster at the end to get the cast speed, I think. So, yeah, take that as you will. And then it's also like a 1 in 5 and all at the end. It's really expensive, but it is doable if that turns out to be cheaper. If you're not doing that, it's a pretty easy ring to craft. You, you know, you fracture the damage over time multi. You... Uh, you can kind of choose how do you want, how do you want to get the suffixes, but it's a question of either reforge caster or fossil spam. You, but you don't want to hit T1 life recoup and T1 cast speed, and then you want to annul a prefix and do a veiled orb to get that, and then you want to annul a suffix or you just annul prefix suffix at, at first, and then you can do you know multi mod suffixes can't be changed. You're guaranteed to get an unveiled prefix. It's about an eighty percent chance to hit life. And then you just craft on a suffix. So this is not the worst thing to craft if you have the fracture, but if this turns out to be too expensive, well, that's the other. That's the where you're gonna go. Next, uh, defiance of destiny was nerfed. I think this was nerfed to like 20%. So at max roll, you're gonna have 24% uh, gain life. I think this is totally fine to be honest. I don't really see how this could change the build significantly. I think that's still gonna be extremely strong just because our max hit is so incredibly high. Uh, next, yeah, so MFing. Uh, this build, I use it for MFing sometimes in SSF, you know, to get scarabs and whatever and really juice T17's maps. But the thing that's changing is that quant's being removed, party play is pretty much dead, and what this means is that T17's are going to be effectively, like, unrunnable for M magic finding, for uniques. And this build runs two T0's. It runs Mageblood. And it runs Def Defiance of Destiny, right? So, these two uniques might go up in price. I think Def Defiance of Destiny might stay the same because it's been nerfed. Might be less in demand. But Mage Blood's definitely going to go up in price because it's going to be way less available. Now, we don't know for sure because, you know, Settlers of Calgar, the Boat League, right? You might be able to print 10 Mage Bloods a day with, who, through who knows what means. But, anyway, that's the setup. So, I'm going to open... Let's see. Here's the POB... Um, this is this is the no adorned setup. I named it no adorned. I don't think adorned is even worth it anymore at the very very high end. So this is the setup I'm gonna put in the description for a high end setup. It's using the fractured quiver, but you can use the uh, other quiver I mentioned and how to craft that one. Uh, anything else to mention in here? Prentice Pact is really good now. And we still have access to these, by the way. Hard to know what how the price is going to be, but but yeah. Oh, and um, where is it? Rational Doctrine. This is really strong, and it's actually really easy to set up too, because you have tattoos now, and you also can simply just bless your mage blood for a better roll to match your strength and intelligence. So from the Rational Doctrine, we get Consecrated Ground, which is big regen and big curse reduction. And then Profane Ground, which is massive crit chance. And now what the crit chance is for, is for one, it's for EO. This gives us 40% more damage. And then also it's for Flask on Crit. This Flask on Crit, if you don't know, if you run Mage Blood and you get Flask on Crit, it 100% of the time goes to your Progenesis or your, you know, your one unique Flask. Now, this is basically, it helps out Pathfinder to get more Flask Sustain. And it's really, really strong. So I would recommend going with that setup. Um, I mentioned Guardian's Blessing. I think that's it for this document. Okay, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the expensive setup for Original Sin. I'm going to go over the cheap version now. Now, as you can see, my max hit 
went down by about 50%. My Fizmax hit went down a lot too. And this setup, don't get me wrong, it's still very expensive. However, it does not run Original Sin. Now, in order, in order to do that, we run Volker's Guidance. And this is basically, it converts some of your lightning damage to like poison, right? Not converts, but like it allows your lightning damage to poison. And it gives you a little bit of poison on hit. So we're still going to have, we're going to run this for 20%. And then the new quiver, um, I think this setup still uses the old one, yeah. Um, I might change this, I might not, but I told you how to do it before, so you should be able to figure it out. I trust that people playing this build can figure out some stuff on their own because it's expensive. If I make like a beginner guide, you know, I'll, I'll smooth it out, but at this point it's like, okay, well you're playing a good build, so you, I hope you know how to play the game. Try not to appeal to any RMT you know what I mean? Um, what else? So yeah, because we don't run Original Sin, we need a source of despair. And so this in this setup, we run... Do we just self-cast it, to be honest? You can also run, like, cast when damage taken, um, despair. I think this guy uh, runs... Yeah, temp chains on hit on the implicit here. You could run temp chains or despair, and then do, like, cast when damage taken, despair, or cast when damage taken, temp chains. And then in order to get both, we um, anoint Whispers of Doom. So that's how that works. Uh, this setup also runs Rational Doctrine and Prentice Pact for big damage. Oh, and by the way, this uh, DPS, this is way more than this because, well, for one, it's Spark. So we're hitting like, you know, 20 times a second because we have massive prod speed and huge cast speed too. And then it's Poison, so this is over time, so it feels better than, you know, on hit. So this setup is still really strong. It's still T17 viable, all that stuff. It's just, you know, way it's way cheaper than the original Sin setup, but it's still expensive. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else I should maybe go over. Uh, this setup's using the Raised Spectre with Haste setup for 200 movement speed. That's pretty strong. Um, also, this setup's using the f old Fizz Taken as, like, LE stuff. Just change that out for what I mentioned earlier in the video. Uh, or I'll just update that before I put the POBs out. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this, I think. So yeah, if this was helpful, you know, leave a like, whatever. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I, I appreciate you guys watching. See you later.